uh, work so that you can make the class or maybe financial aid can, can help you with a little more better financial aid so that you can attend your classes. I'm, I'm just passing that on. <laughs> okay. So the way um, my manager, the way my manager set up, that's not going to happen. I'm sorry. Well, I feel like as long as you're here, you make an effort. What can I say? You know, but I'm just passing that on. Okay. So anyway, so I've just kind of wanted to present you that with the, the whole, um, um, thing about Adobe. If, when we get, you know, into, you know, I want you to check and see if you have Adobe. And if you cannot, I want you to email Miss Riley. It's C Riley. I'll, I'll, I'll write it up here on the chat. C at scsu.edu. Okay. I put it on the chat box here. And if you, I want you to check and I want you to see if you can get Adobe. If you can't, email her and she'll get you a license and she'll help you get on. Okay. All right. Next up on the whole agenda. Oh, hold on. Let's get back up here again. Is let me pull up everything. All right. So the last time we were here, we talked about the different roles in I'm going to pull up my our blackboard thing here. Pardon me. Give me a second, please. How is everybody? Everybody's okay today? While I'm pulling this up, you can we can chit chat. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay, we can hold you in the light here. All right, and not feeling too great today. Oh no, please tell me you don't have that, have the, what, you know, that thing that's going around. Yeah, no, 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 don't have that, but just not feeling great today. I'm just holding you in the light here, okay? Okay. All right, discussions. All right, I'm going to trade the board here, assignment, content. All right, so know that every single thing we do, let me share the screen. Every single thing we do in here is in it's under content assignments. Does everybody know where to go when it comes to content and assignments? If you don't, yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Okay. So today we've been talking. Uh, you know, into last week we've talked about roles. We talked about what a producer does. We talked about what a director does. And so today we're going to talk. And we talked about scripts, different kinds of scripts. And today we're going to talk about shots, like how to uh, line up shots. And also um, there's something called the language of the edit. Um, there's a book here, there's a couple books here that are really good. I have this one book that I highly recommend. I don't know if you can read it. It's called The Art of the Cut, Editing Com Concepts Every Filmmaker Should Know. And you might want to write that down and get that in your book collection because it's something that I had from undergrad that I still look at it and I still like it. Um, the other book just wandered off somewhere. It's, oh, here it is, it fell off the couch. So my other book, I actually bought a second copy because the book is such a good book. Does this look backwards? It does, doesn't it? No, ma'am. It's, it's called The Grammar of the Edit. And it is excellent, excellent. And now I use it for teaching. And it's by Ray Thompson. You might want to write that down as you go into, because this is going to make you an excellent filmmaker, excellent broadcaster to have this knowledge. And basically what I love about it is that I'm not a person, I'm more of a visual person that likes to just see a picture of something. And I'm going to show you some things that it does. It, can, are you able to see this okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so what it does, what's really, really excellent about this book is that it gives you examples of what a good example of a good cut is. 
And that's the thing in school right now and in professional world that's going to make you stand up above somebody who, who's not as professional is like, this is an example right here where there's a story and it's the way they lined up the shots. So they're showing you, this is an example of a, um, an extreme close up. They'll show you extreme close up where you're up top and they'll tell you why you use it because every shot is not just, well, I felt like it. Every shot, is like it's like learning a language you know if there's grammar that, that that you use that correct grammar like there's a reason why you want to get real close like in a story why would you want to do get, why would you want to do a shot like this to somebody in a story what would you use that for anybody speak up <laughs> um w would you use it as like in like a monologue type scene you could but what would that express? If I'm up here real tight, this is kind of cool example using the zoom like this. What, what does this say? What is this? What do you feel when you see this? What do you think I'm feeling? Um, well, right now, based on your facial expression, happiness. Um, yes, yes. So by me getting up that close, but when I'm doing like this, do you see, does, does it have the same feeling, the same impact? Um, a little bit, yes, ma'am, but not as much as yeah. right. Not as much as up close. Man, we can't do this like this in school. <laughs> like, <laughs> <on the> camera. <laughs> so, so there's there's the, the grammar. Of the, I mean, we're gonna go through these different shots, but the different shots actually have a purpose. Like they give you different information, and you don't ever want to. You don't usually, unless you are some artistic reason you usually don't stay on a shot for too long. You, it's just, you get, an, you get like about every three seconds, our brain catches information so fast. So you may wanna be able to take notes on in here because I'm not sure if we're gonna have a test or we're gonna have just write a, a paper or something, okay? So just saying that. So showing a, a big close up and a cut, okay. Um, yeah, so like here's another example. This, I mean, I'll, I'll put some, I'll scan it and I'll put this up on here, some of the pages. Yes, ma'am. But I just highly recommend because you're going to use this all through school and other, your other classes. It's just a really extreme long shot. There, here, this is a good example of a screen. They're showing an extreme, wait a minute, can you, I don't know if you could see this. Can you see that? An extreme long shot? Yes. So this guy's like maybe out on a desert somewhere. And then they look closer and then a little closer. Maybe it's something where they, they pull in to the shot. And, you know, that can convey loneliness or, um, you know, he's all alone in the desert. Uh, you know, the five types of edit, we'll, we'll go into that too. But um, is everybody getting, I know I'm, I feel like I'm talking a whole lot. <laughs> jump in here, jump in here. This is our discussion, jump in here. Mm -hmm. All right. I appreciate you. Thank you. Same, same here, Miss Kat. I appreciate it. All right. So here we're going to, let me share screen. All right. So we're going to see a little video here about framing the shots. This is really important. Are you able to see a YouTube video right now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Is it big? No. It's not. Now it is. Now it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's check this out. In the previous episode of The Shot List, we broke down all the most commonly used shot sizes in the filmmaker's toolbox. Once the camera shot size is determined, the question becomes, how should I compose the subjects in each frame? Ginger. This is episode two of The Shot List. Framing. Now, let's get into the proper frame of mind. 
These are the most commonly used framing options to cover action in a scene. I've never seen anything like this. Okay, Singles, hold on a second. So I, I sh we need to take a screenshot of the. We need a shot of this. All right. So these shots, I want you to think about these shots. These are important. You are going to have to take a test, or, or and you're going to need to know these shots. Okay. So a single, single shot, two shot, three shot, four shot. And then they're going to, I think they're showing you. Commonly more. use framing options to cover action in a scene. Okay. The t really important thing you're going to know is a one shot, two shot, a three shot. And then the rest is a crowd after that as far as I'm concerned. Over the shoulder shot. The reason you have an over the shoulder shot is to show the reaction, the response of another person. Um, that's an important shot right here over the OTS. I've never seen anything like this. Singles, which can be clean or dirty. Two shot, over the shoulder, point of view. And finally, the insert. Our first framing convention, the single. A single shot features one character alone in the frame. The individual character is the primary focus. There are two ways to frame a single. A clean single is when no part of any other character is visible in the frame. Use when you want to convey a character's isolation. Whereas a dirty single includes a limited presence from another character in the frame. And don't forget that singles, like all of the framing options, can be combined with any of the shot sizes we covered in the last video. The close up, a medium shot, or a wide shot, the single still applies. When two characters are visible together in frame, this is called the two shot. You want to live long. The orientation of the characters to one another can vary, but to be considered a two shot, both faces must be clearly visible. The two shot is all about creating a visual relationship between two characters. This relationship might be affectionate, contentious, or even imaginary. more characters are added to the frame, the terminology adjusts to three shot, four shot, and so on. There is no official limit on how high this number can go. One, two, three, four, five. But numbering this would be overkill best to just call it a crowd shot. Remember that no matter how many characters you include in a single frame, you are creating a relationship between them. The most common and useful way of covering a conversation is the over-the-shoulder shot. An OTS shot acts like a hybrid between a single and a two shot, and similar to a single, we're often only focusing on one character at a time. Just in a second. From these OTS angles, we get perspectives from both sides and a sense that we are included in the moment. Can I help you? I hope so. I'm an old friend of George's. Thought I'd stop and say hello. When you want the audience to experience the perspective of a character, it can be effective to frame up a point of view or POV shot. The idea of the POV can cover a wide range of perspectives. A person, an alien, a camera, a disembodied spirit, or even a shark. In many cases, a POV shot is also paired with POV audio, so we can see what they see and hear what they hear.
The insert shot is not just about going extremely tight on a detail. The way the information is framed is often even more important than how prominent it is on screen. Inserts can also be combined with POV shots, a first-person perspective. Or are we looking at the insert shot from a third-person perspective? Or a hybrid frame like this? Both an elegant insert and an effective POV. We've covered the most common types of camera framing, but now let's put it all together. Let's look at Bong Joon-ho's Parasite. This sequence of scenes is about the physical and ideological connections between family members. Watch how the director ties them together through framing decisions. An ultra-wide foreshot of the Kims in the Park family's backyard. An insert shot of four whiskey glasses being filled. A medium foreshot of the Kim family. A hybrid foreshot, OTS, POV. A close-up dirty single. A dirty single. A dirty two shot. A dirty OTS shot. A complimentary OTS. A dirty single. A full four shot. A two shot. Pans over to a different two shot. The pan continues to a three shot. A dirty single. A dirty single. An OTS shot. A clean single. Hands over to frame another clean single. <laughs> Lastly, a wide four shot. <laughs> As we've seen, the way you frame a shot helps guide the scene in the desired direction. Once you understand what you want to achieve in the scene, you can decide how best to frame your subjects. Plan out your shots in detail before production. Shot listed using Studio Binder. If you're looking to create and collaborate on a shot list, you can find a link in the description. In the next episode of The Shot List, we'll explore every all right, so um, here they're just showing you, we're just going, they're just showing, does everybody understand? Does that make sense? The different kinds of shots that you can use? Yes, yes ma'am. Ma yes, yeah, ma'am. I, I like that video. Yeah, I did too. I like that it. it's a really good, it explained it well. Does everybody, can, can, you, does there, can everybody tell, can anybody tell me why, why it's so important to line up your shots a certain way? What does that do? Um, it allows your audience to um, to see your vision in a way, like make it like you want them to feel how you're feeling while you're shooting the movie or what you want them to feel. Um, so shots help that um, help you get your point across. Right. Well, it helps make your information. So like usually if two shots that usually do go together is if somebody's really close up and then you have a far away shot and it you, it's like a reveal shot a single person shot or the, the people so there's usually what I, i'm going to give you a, a little homework after this class is up like tonight or over the weekend watch movies and don't watch it you know, we watch movies, we get caught up in the story, and then we forget everything. So I want you to watch it with the intention of watching how the shots are put together, how the movie's put together. I want you to be constructed. And that that will really teach you a lot. All right. I got one more video to show that's really interesting. Let me get back into it and find it. All right. And this is all under content, so you can go back and watch this, okay? Well, 
So, how do you frame your shot so that... Here you go. Looks interesting. How do you take better photos to tell better stories? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you four framing and composition techniques that will instantly help you improve. It's coming up. Hey everyone, Steve here from Learn Online Video, helping you master the art of online video production. And today we're talking framing and composition. And look, if you're new to framing and composition and you aren't using any of these techniques yet, then by the end of this video, you're gonna have all the knowledge that you need to start taking better photos and shooting better videos. And the best part about framing and composition is that it's completely free. Normally when we talk about improving our videos or our photos, it involves spending money. Get a better camera, get this piece of software, get this camera accessory. With framing and composition, it's completely free. You just need the knowledge. So today we're gonna to cover four techniques that anyone can do. The rule of thirds, leading lines, symmetry, and framing within your frame. So look, let's simplify all of this, okay? Let's bring this down to basics so that you have a really good understanding of when, why, and where you might use some of these techniques. This is framing and composition 101. Now let's pretend for a second you were given a brief and your brief was to capture an opening shot of this lighthouse. How would you capture it? Well, let's run through each of these four framing techniques and apply them to this lighthouse to see what difference it makes. Okay, so let's talk the rule of thirds. Now, the first thing that you should do is enable the grids on your camera. They look a little something like this. Now, you may have seen these grids on your camera before and switched them off because you thought that they were distracting, but if you're new to framing a composition, I encourage you to keep these switched on. Now, the grid is made up of two vertical lines and two horizontal lines, all spaced evenly apart. Now, when we place our subjects or focal points on these lines, particularly where they meet, a much more aesthetically pleasing shot is created and our eyes are drawn to these focal points. It also helps balance the shot and gives it more context. So let's place our lighthouse to the right of our frame and place it directly on the intersecting points of this grid. This then leaves space to the left of our frame where we can fill it with something to help us tell a better story. In this case, we have the sea, some grass, and this helps give the audience a better understanding of where the lighthouse is located. Now, when shooting horizons, don't put your horizon in the middle of the frame. Try and put it on either the top or the bottom horizontal line. This allows you to make a feature of either the sky or the landscape and makes for a much more pleasing shot. Now, I've made a whole video on the rule of thirds. I will link it in the cards and put it in the description of this video. Be sure to check that out. Now, the rule of thirds technique is commonly used in interview situations. You may have noticed this when someone's being interviewed, the idea being that you give your subject some looking room. So either put them to the left or to the right of frame. Okay, the next technique is leading lines. And the idea here is really simple, okay? Use elements within your environment to create a visual pathway to your subject or focal point. So take this shot of the lighthouse here, for example. I've used this pathway to help draw the eye to my focal point. These don't need to be straight lines. They can be curved lines. Regardless of your location, look for elements within your environment that will help draw the eye to your focal point. I've also made an entire video on leading lines. I will put that in the description below. Here are some other shots I took of the lighthouse using the leading lines technique. This technique also works great for portrait shots. Just frame your subject so that lines within your environment help lead the eye. Okay, let's talk symmetry. Now this technique is fairly self-explanatory. We're going to frame our shot so that it's nice and balanced with our subject in the middle of the frame. As you can see here, the lighthouse is nicely centered with the flagpoles either side. Another example of this would be a documentary style film where someone is talking directly to the camera. If your subject is talking to camera, frame them in the center of the shot. And notice here, we're also using some leading lines. For an absolute masterclass in symmetry, watch anything by director Wes Anderson. His films are full of beautiful symmetry and really make him stand out as a uniquely stylized filmmaker. 
Okay, framing within your frame. What does this mean? Well, again, look, let's use this lighthouse as an example. We're using elements within our environment to frame our focal point. A slightly more stylized approach, this one, a time and a place for it. And it also, it's a little harder to pull off because it requires having something within your environment that you're able to frame your focal point with. But when used correctly, it can really help your photos and videos stand out. So there you have it. Those were four framing and composition techniques to help you start shooting better video. All right, we're back. All right, so what did you think? It was dope. I liked him. That was a great video. What's good about it? Uh, I like the way he broke down, like the rule of thirds and um, mm -hmm. using your environment to, uh, to like make, basically make the shot more visually appealing. So some of you have already made your own films and stuff, right? Josh, you've done some stuff, right? All right. Okay. Um, you know, like some of these shots, Jaden, how are you doing today? It looks like to me I only have three people in the class. I need I need some video. I need to be able to see some people here because this, this blank screen thing is just crazy. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Tamira, hi. I just feel like I'm just talking to the computer screen and, and not real people. And it, it's kind of strange to me. Nakia, hi. I'm glad you're here. Okay, so who's made a film before? Who's Who has actually worked on a film or done a film? Like, raise your hand. Okay, so a lot of you have. That's awesome. So I want to share some of my favorite shots. Have you ever seen these shots, like, that people will put like um, a camera in the refrigerator or in the mailbox and then the actor, you know, opens it up. You, you see them from that point of view. That's a point of view shot. And that's a really fun, creative shot because um, it changes your shot and it changes your perspective, you know, because, you know, like people take in information really fast. So a lot of times if you keep on one shot you have to, if you have a long shot and you keep a shot on for a long time you need to have a really good reason like there are stylized directors who make these artsy type films and they will keep a shot on for a long time and you're like god that shots on that guy for a long time but it's usually the style of the film because a lot of times you get bored have you and that's why i want you to watch more movies and films and media and stuff and be aware of it actually you know i how about if i make that maybe that's in a better assignment analyze a video and tell me about how you broke down the shots we'll, we'll talk about it on monday bring something to class to talk about um like I want you to just become aware of how how things are put to constructed. You know, like, did they use a POV shot? How did they tell that story? Did they, um, you know, just find a clip somewhere? Um, so, okay, so that's, anybody, just thoughts, questions? This is a workshop here. This is, a, you know, a talking workshop, so. Yeah, one of, one of my favorite shows that has great shots is, um, there's a show called The 100. I don't know if you've ever seen that before, but they, they put great shots in a lot of their stuff. What's what's the show about? It's like a post-apocalyptic type show. People, they are known. The Earth has basically been uninhabitable for like hundreds, thousands of years. And they are living, they've been living on a spaceship and has been floating around space for a long time. And they actually send down a whole bunch of prisoners and kids down to the to earth because oh, there's it's the somewhat yeah it's called the the 100 yeah i see it here let's see let's see what it is here octavia moments it's, uh, the merger what will happen to our friends the 100 trailer so this is a cw yeah, CW, yeah. CW has that heat. Anything CW, they usually make great shows. Okay. Do you all right, do you recognize this scene? Uh I don't know. I, 
I think you I think you're looking at the new episode I ain't seen yet, Miss Cat. Oh <laughs> well let's just check it out. The, the, analyze it. You're wondering what will happen to your friends. Yes, I shimmer. Join me, please. killed for this during my time on the mountain. They heard about first disciple landers. I assume you two were close. I'm very sorry. Close. I met him twice. I usually only meet the first disciple once when they come to wake me every 20 years to say there's been no progress to the last war. Anders woke me twice. The second time we had found the key. So, yes. I suppose, I mean, comparatively speaking, we were close, but that's not what you meant, is it? You were testing me to see if I lived by the same code that I expected my disciples. Yes. Forgive me. I don't want to cause you any more pain, Bellamy. But your friends have to pay for what they've done. Their crimes go beyond Anders. Dozens of disciples are dead because of them. What if there was a way to fix the flame? Help me. The technology you have here, it could be possible. And you'll help me get it, as long as I don't harm your friends. <sighs> don't be ashamed. The path is new to you. I've walked it for centuries, and it's still hard. You remind me of my son, Reese. He went in search of the flame I never saw him again. I think my daughter killed him. I'll never know for sure. Well, if I can get the flame, and your daughter really is in there. You can find out. Okay, interesting. All right, Rob, you want to discuss that? What's what kind of shot? Yeah, that that oh, you said what kind of shot? That was a over the shoulder with a lot of close up shots. And yeah, basically, it was just trying to show that. The character uh, Bellamy, the younger guy, he was actually um, is basically just showing him and his, I guess, newfound admiration. That was actually a new episode I ain't seen yet, so yeah, that was a big spoiler for me just now. Cool. Hmm. Anybody else have a, a show they really like and they would want to check something out here or thinking about shots? Oh, I feel like the office. The office has a lot of different shots, a lot of different angles and stuff like that too. On Netflix. A show that you like, that you like the way it's edited and put together? Yeah. No, oh, you're saying you like this show. Okay, do you have a show that you like, the way it's edited and put together? No, he, he said The Office. The, off, the show The Office, the oh, one you said you didn't like. Oh, you see me itching, you know? Yeah, Josh, she said The Office was trash, bro. It's Who said it? Whoa, whoa, Cat, Miss Cat, Miss Cat said the office was trash. Yeah. I didn't say that. I didn't come. Oh, Rob, now don't. As far as, as far as Camel, 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 Camel Angel, I'm kidding. I'm But you said what I was thinking, but I don't say like that stuff like that. <laughs> uh, Josh, what do you, you think? What do you think of the office? I think the office has a lot of different like close up angles and over the shoulder shots. A lot of different camera angles that's that relevant to what we was talking about. Yeah, all right. So I never could get into the office because because of the way it's shot. And I think it's an example of how I would like you to not do it. Oh, my goodness. Not turn anything in that way. Um, let's see if I can find the, the post office, the drill, the office US. I like it because they do use, like, not unorthodox, but it's different. You don't see too many. It's like reality TV type shots. But yeah. then you have to like film. That's why I like it. Yeah, and 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 you know the best ever. See the invasion, and and that's why I think they. Wait a minute, is this anything good? I'm trying to find. All right, here's a scene. Let's take a look at it. And and you know, and that's why um, the story. They get so many shots, and there's camera shaking, and there's there's. It looks like students did it. It you know, and and, and it takes me out of the story. It's jarring. But let's take a look. Nobody can do the same. Like 
you had a chance. This is how you make it in this country. Can you tell you nobody? analysis there um was there any cuts in this uh it was just all through i don't think they cut one i think the same guy with the same camera just running around filming everybody dude i liked it though. that was doing yeah that was in it tamir what did you think it was chaotic <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah what else So go me or somebody else? Miss Tamira, yeah, you. Oh, um, it just had a lot of, it didn't even have a whole bunch of different perspectives because it was just that one camera and the entire shot. It should have had a little bit more storyline to it, but I guess it was just an intro, but it was just chaotic. It was too much to look at because it wasn't cuts. It was like I was looking everywhere. So it was no focal point really, unless the person was singing. That's why I'm a little ADD. I just, I, that's why I never could get in the office because that's, that set the whole tone for the whole show. But it was so unique that, you know, it, it made it, it, it was famous for that, you know, and um, that was uh, definitely, a, you know, this, the, you know, this guy's, you know, um, my mind's gone blank here. You know, they're just wearing a camera, a web, a cam, and then they're just moving all around and, and with the shot and then, and, you know, the, the camera guy has got a, a pretty much like an actor. I mean, they're, they've had to rehearse, choreograph where they're going to move, where everybody's going to move to get those shots. And it's just one continuous shot. It just kind of, what kind of feeling do you get from this? Anthony, what kind of feeling did, did you get from watching that clip? Like, like joy, I guess. Like, you know, they're just in the office having fun, goofing around, all that. I feel like they were just knowing they're having a good time, so I say joy. Yeah, having fun, scooping off. Yeah. Um, who do I got on the row here? Bottom. Oh, Jada. Jada, you got any thoughts, comments? We're, we're kind of coming to the end of class here. Um, well, it definitely did give me, like, the feeling of joy and excitement, like, like what um, the other boy was saying, like, um, they were having fun and stuff. But as far as, um, like, just watching it, I agree with what everybody else is saying. Like, it was just one view, and it was chaotic. That's all I got. <laughs> Have you watched The Office? Do you know a little bit? Or you just comment on anything today, the shot list, um, you know, how to put, you know. Personally, I've never seen The Office, but... Uh -huh. Is there a film or a, something that you can think of uh, the, and about the way it's put together that, that you really like, that you would like to share, or that you think is interesting? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just starting to get into more shows, okay. though, so okay. not well, really. I want, to, I want you to take, um, you know what, and maybe that's what we could do for our... Okay, here's what I want to do. This is what I want to do. For oh, I have one, though. Instead of, I'm going to give you an option. Instead of, I hate tests. If you hate tests, I hate, I think I hate tests. I I'm hate with you. Tests. 
Do you hate I hate Tess too. Yeah, I hate him. And I, I don't think, it, I don't honestly, I don't think it really um, assesses what you really learn. And, and, and my, my whole thing about the way I teach is I want to know that you're thinking in your mind, your brain. I want you to show me your gears are turning in your brain and you're thinking about what we're talking about, what we're doing. So here's going to be your assignment, what I think is a better thing to do. I want you to write, an, find a film clip of something, an analysis and I want you to look at the way it's cut and how it has to do with what we're talking about today. You know, like film, like the, the editing, how the film's put together. And I want you to write like a little paper, 120 page paper and show me, you put me screenshots in it or you can show me the clip in the discussion board and I want you guys to discuss it. And that's what I'm gonna make our assignment for this week. Is that something you can jump on? Oh. Um. So we'll have to like put the link up of the. Um... Yeah, I want you to show it. You know, like we just did. I showed you some links, and then we discuss it. So I want to keep doing because we're kind of getting close on time. I want you to go find your own little clip of uh, a film or a show that you like, and you like the way it's cut. Like I want to know that you're thinking about how videos and film and television is edited. Like. You know, like you've noticed that there's this big shot and then you notice there's a tight shot and tell me, analyze it. Tell me why you think this is effective or tell me why you think it's not effective. You can find just one video like that, like the office. You think, oh, that's chaotic. I can't get into that. I don't like the way it's edited. And then I want you to respond to two other people in the class and we're going to continue this concession, this uh, on discussion board. Okay. But I want you well, to post, make sure you post the link when, of whatever when, you're looking at. And, and do you know how to do that? Let me show you how to do that real quick. Do you know how to do that? When will this be due? Well, we can talk about that. Um, okay. Today is Wednesday. Can we have it by, can we have it's it by Thursday. class next week? Or, can you have it by Monday? Yes, ma'am. Next week, where is it? This is in lieu of a test. Yeah, we can do that today, Thursday. Though. Today is Wednesday, so you want a, more than a week? That's what we're going to do. We're going to do this in front of the Today is Thursday. It's not Wednesday today. Today's Thursday. Okay, you want a week. All right. Okay, I'll make it next Thursday. Next Thursday by class. What what was the assignment again? My um, Wi-Fi had went out and came but, back in. But, um, the assignment is find a uh, maybe a clip of a movie or a movie that you like. Do you, does everybody know how to do a screenshot? Yeah. Yes. If you don't, let me know. Do a cr screenshot of the film, like uh, if you want to use that as an example, but show me examples, show me like a, a YouTube clip or show me um, a screenshot of, of, of that where you stop it or give me an analysis of a film or a video and tell me about the editing. Tell me the way it's edited. Do you think it was effective in telling the story or do you think it's unorganized and uninteresting? You can see, you can learn as much from a bad film as you can a good film. That makes sense. So, and in just like 120 words, something easy, a few paragraphs, and then I want you to respond to two other classmates in the class. Yes, react. Any reaction? Any response right now? From you? Yes, ma'am. I got you. All right, you good? All right. So you good with that? Yes, that's good. Okay, Anthony, you good with that? You good? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Who else? Uh, Nakia, you good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, and I will write that, and after we get off here now, I will write that up on discussion board, and I will write out all the parameters for it so that you know exactly what to do, okay? And I guess we'll be meeting on Tuesday, and we're going to talk about um, shot list, and I'll get some, I'll, I will, I will uh, scan some stuff in this book for you, the grammar, the edit show you a little bit about how to line up shots and we'll talk more about how to make storyboard 
and then I think we're going to go towards a project. Um, we'll shoot a cell, we'll shoot a commercial on our cell phone. Who's done a commercial before? Made a commercial in school? Nobody has? Okay. So we'll talk about storyboards and we'll talk about making a commercial and that's where we're going to go next. Okay, cool? Cool. Cool, yeah, cool. All right, yeah. <laughs> Are you guys having fun yet? A little bit? A little bit. Too much. Yes. Yes. Is this is this as good is this as good as being at school or, or worse? <laughs> Nothing is good. Better. Better? Loaded question. Yeah, I could show you. I can line up shots better. <laughs> show you. All right. Um, all right. So that's going to, I hate this. Don't do test. I, I'm not going to do so many tests. I want you to write. I want you to learn. So that's how we're going to do it. Any other questions, thoughts, responses in class? No, ma'am. I want you to go and see if you can uh, check your email to see if you have Adobe, to see if you can get on it and, and, and without a free trial, without paying for it and see if you can get it for free. And we're going to work on getting that next week or so okay all right anything else talk to me doc talk to me. any other questions we got another minute no nah, class been great today very informative i love the videos you showed too thank you thank you thank you okay well i'm going to end the meeting right now and i will post this up on content so that you can review this um in in content um, and content and assignments, and I'll post the assignment. Okay. okay. Cool. All right. Okay. Uh, yes, Tamira, do you have a question? I just said okay. Okay. All right. Yes, See you on Tuesday. You guys have a good weekend. You okay. Too.